Okay, welcome back. Today we are fitting up this transition pan in the 67 Mustang and I really hope you like the uh, new seats I have in it. So I went ahead and drilled the holes from the outside in, so inside the wheel well, um, just because of ease of access and uh, what I'll do is once this is all back in, I'll weld back through from the wheel well side. Um, It'll be a lot easier, I won't have the frame rail in the way, and that lets me just drill the holes out completely. I wanna take a moment and just comment that uh, I love all the questions that I get. I love uh, to share what I've done and what worked and what didn't work. I would like to uh, remind people that I'm, I'm new to almost all of this and I should not be in any way be considered an expert. Um, so I thoroughly encourage you or highly encourage you to seek other sources. Um, I'm going to try to put some YouTube cards up showing some other channels that I've got a lot of insight from. Uh, Joe Daddy's Garage is, is a big one. Um, go, go to forums. Go talk to people who have done this a hundred times before as opposed to me where I'm figuring it out, figuring it out as I go along. So I went ahead and took, alternating between uh, a grinder and a sanding disc uh, with, on my air tool, um, just to get rid of all of the raised areas uh, where I drilled out the holes with a spot weld cutter. There's some where I went too deep, and I think one where I accidentally went all the way through both pieces of metal. Um, so I'm going to go through and weld up all the little areas that need to be repaired from my own doing. Okay, I am attempting to test fit this transition pan. This uh, is reminding me of the firewall um, where I couldn't get it underneath the floor. Um, so yeah, what I'm finding is I can get one side in and get it perfectly wedged on this side, which is awesome. Um, it's There's a little crease right here in the uh, wheel housing that it's not able to go past and it needs to go underneath the parts back there. So um, I think what I'm going to have to do is maybe make a little relief cut just so I can bend that corner in and finish uh, tucking it in. <sighs> awesome. So I'm, I'll think about that. What I'm gonna do now is take this back out, treat the inside of the cross member, um, and let that do its thing. I'm trying to learn from my previous mistakes. I did a similar thing with the firewall. I needed to cut a relief cut to get it under the floor. Turns out now I have no floor, it was not necessary. But when I did that, I did it in free space, um, so there was nothing behind it. And then I had to deal with butt welding with nothing behind. Uh, here, I'm actually aiming for where this lands on the frame rail. So hopefully this will give me enough relief to bend that out of the way. I only need like maybe a half inch to try to slip it in. So we'll see if that gets me there. Um, and then if I did my measurements right, haha, um, it will land right on that flange. And then I have something behind there so I can put a good deal of heat on there without blowing through repeatedly. And it should wind up with a uh, more solid repair. Um, and what I'll also do is cut out a space so I can plug weld along here as well. And that will, you know, in hindsight, maybe I should have done that first before splitting it. Oh well, uh, always learning. Okay, the first test fit in here, uh, the first successful test fit in here, is not too bad. Um, so let me show you. Remember, there were only 12 spot welds holding the upper to the lower. I'm going to add more, but I want to make sure that these line up. Uh, you can see this almost lines up at the bottom here. You can see some daylight in between. The top seems to be also pretty close there. Um, the passenger side, you can see that there's a gap here. I know that this needs to fit further in, um, but also we'll see how 
uh, how this closes up as I start to straighten this out. Um, the back side of the panel is obstructed. I need to get in between here and clean up some of the old metal. Um, I think that's a big reason why we're not pushing any further back to the rear of the car. Um, but yeah, and you can see how far overlapped we are um, from the relief cut that I made. And a lot of this gap, once I can scooch the panel back uh, and let it come up against the wheelhouse, a lot of this outer gap will close up, I hope. Um, and then at the back where the trunk sits, um, obviously we're, we're dipped down here. We've, you know, got a good inch gap back there. Um, but yeah, once I slide this back, it should close up a little better and that will hopefully maybe get us within reason. So we'll see, we'll keep, uh, I'll keep trying to make this fit, clean up in here on both sides and uh, straighten out these flanges. I really didn't do a good job at cleaning up the landing spots and straighten up the the wheel housing a little bit. The trick is, can I get it out of there now? It It is wedged back in, which is exciting. So let me try to remove this again and get some more work done on it. Okay, I don't know if you can see back in there, but using a, a few different tools, I was able to clean off the remaining flange that was there. Um, it might not look like much, especially with this upper panel uh, being a little mangled to get it out of the way, but that will allow me to slip the panel all the way in there and hopefully made it up a little better with these. Uh, so next I'm gonna work on straightening out the bottom of the uh, wheel wells here, same on the other side. Um, Okay, I've got all of my flanges straightened out. I'm going to go around with my welder and weld up some of the spots like that, where I went a little too deep and then grind them flat. Um, it looks... I didn't think that Ford galvanized the rear frames. I knew they had galvanized the uh, the rockers, but the way that these have like no rust on them and the way that they're kind of have that... I don't know how to describe it, the light looking corrosion on it as opposed to rust. Uh, it looks like a, a galvanized coating on there. So just to be safe, under my welding mask, I'm going with a full cartridge respirator. Um, I also, you could probably hear it in the background, have a vent fan. I'm going to have a fan circulating air and crack the doors to the garage just so I get fresh air coming in um, and I don't breathe those heavy metal vapors. Okay. Got a test fit in again after cleaning up all the surfaces. Um, you can see we're, we're starting to line up a little better if I peek in the 12 <laughs> weld holes that they made. Um, we're still a little ways away. It might be tough to tell, but as we push down, you can see it get closer. Um, here's going back to the trunk. We still have on both sides, that gap there. But if I lift this up, see that closes up a little better and we're you know, maybe five sixteenths away on both sides, maybe slightly more on this side. Um, what I'm going to do is do this one handed. Um, you can see we've got that gap there. So I'm gonna just kind of bend this out and this down a little bit to see if we can get this a little bit, a little bit closer, um, just to see how far off we are. Um, I extended my relief cut a little further just because it was starting to buckle. You can almost see right there a little bit um, when I forced it in. Um, and it, it now has slid in, but you can tell, this is one inch tape, it's now narrowed down towards the back to almost half its width. And there's that daylight there. So I think what I need to do, and it's touching here and gapped there. So that tells me the wheel well is not straight <laughs> there. So what I'm going to do, I think, 
is um, get a clamp and a clamp and probably a piece of wood and a hammer and just kind of see if I can straighten out gently this flange here um, just so it'll it'll made up a little smoother. Um, once that's kind of pushed to where it needs to be um, to leave a consistent gap there, um, then we'll see we'll see just how close we are. Okay, put a couple of clamps on there um, just to pull that flange up against the wheel housing. Let me show you the inside. So we are a lot closer and we've got almost all of the tape exposed. We're maybe still three sixteenths away, which there's still a tiny gap at the front there, which will pull up. And then over on the driver's side, I haven't clamped this side yet, but well, I can't get a good angle on it, but there's maybe an eighth inch there. So I am really hopeful that, you know, once we pull this a little closer on that side and a few other spots and pull this side over, that's going to give us that extra gap back. So here's hoping. Um, and let me show you the back. So in all the shifting around here on the passenger side, if I bring this up, are much closer, both there and there. I can still, I mean, there's still that little gap, so I still need to bend it a little bit. Um, and as I said, this side I haven't really positioned yet, but we're much closer as well. So, okay, I think what I'm going to do is take this pan back out and do a little bit of bending without the pan in the way uh, on this wheel housing just to get it a little bit straighter um, so I can actually access it and, and bend it a little bit and then bend here and here on the pan to just kind of flatten this out, make this curve a little less sharp so I'm not fighting it. Okay, starting at the back corners again, um, I went ahead and bent here and here. Uh, very carefully uh, massaged the metal, which consisted of grabbing a two by four and basically leaning my body weight into it along the crease to flatten it out here and here. Um, and you can see we're pulling much closer, um, almost to the point where I can squeeze that with my thumb and get it to where I think it needs to be. And same on this side, eh, a little further. We'll see. We'll see if I shift this up. There we go. That was a terrible noise, but we'll, we'll get that closer. Um, and I also massaged similarly with a two by four, but this time I added some hammer action, uh, massaged this wheelhouse out a little bit, uh, really comparing it to the other one and comparing it to the frame rail distance. This wheelhouse was bent this way. Um, who knows why? Uh, so anyway, I, I did a good job at straightening this out quite a bit. And you can tell we are a lot closer. And let's see if I can show you with a screwdriver. Almost able to get all of the tape showing if I push. Um, and again, I still have a gap on that side. So once I clamp here and clamp here and and adjust as needed, I think we're going to pull to exactly where we need to be. Um, okay, I have clamps everywhere. Let me show you what things look like. Um, things are lining up nicely on this side, nicely over here. This will press down nicely there, coming around. Um, just a little bit of a gap there uh, in that. I think I think just a little bending on this and, and pulling this up, that'll make that made up nicely. Um, that flange is a lot closer on that side. 
on this side we're looking really good and that flange is pretty darn close. Um, we are almost all the way out and a couple of clamps here should do it. Here's the one part that I'm not thrilled with and I'll tell you what I'm going to do about it. Um, all of the spot welds here are landing on the panel underneath except here. We're half a hole off on these two. What am I going to do about this? Honestly, I'm going to leave it. Um, when I go and drill holes, I will drill where it lands on the flange um, and not continue this line. Uh, and I'm just going to fill these in, put a copper back back there, fill them in, and call it good. Um, <laughs> as you can tell, like there are lots of spots. That's one of the ones I took off before from the floor where the factory missed. Here's another one. The factory just missed. It, it happens all the time. I'm thinking that either the, the shock mount panel underneath, they just missed, or um, the factory when they aligned it just missed. I'm not going to freak out about it. I'm not going to do anything crazy. I'll probably add a weld in between these two here um, and then just continue along when I make holes for this. Uh, yeah, otherwise I'm, I'm pretty darn happy uh, with the progress so far. Um, so one thing to note, before I go and weld everything in, I am going to recheck my measurements. Uh, all the work I've done back here, there, the rear was kind of uh, moving around. I'm just going to make sure that in the, what, two months since I started this, my, my height and level on everything is still where I think it is. Um, I know this car had a twist, if you recall from videos past. Um, it's, I know about it. It's maybe three sixteenths of an inch all the way front to back twist, which is probably not that crazy from the factory, but I'm going to see if, um, I took a little bit of it out when I did the front end. I'm going to see if I can, uh, see what the measure is today now that I've got the entire floor out and then adjust as necessary and see if I can get that down to less than a 16th of an inch would be lovely. And one thing I have not mentioned, and uh, I'm sure some folks are looking at this and it's glaringly obvious, um, there are the seat belt mount points here and here um, that they have welded in. And the ones on the side I mentioned earlier, they had not welded in. But if you look, here's the hole where it would go. And on the other side, the hole where it would go. Obviously, that's the frame rail right underneath. So that's not a good place to put a seat belt mount point. I think mine are just to the side here. So this transition pan should be for multiple years. I think it's uh, maybe 65 through 68, I'm not sure. Um, but probably the reason they didn't add these is because it's not necessarily there for all cars, this being a 1967. So I'm gonna treat that like a large obnoxious uh, weld hole probably, and uh, just weld up, eh, we'll see if I, if I cut a little circle and weld it in, or if I just kind of fill this in with weld. Uh, one's more annoying than the other. Well, they're both annoying in different ways. Um, so what I will do is probably once everything is installed, I will relocate. I still have the old panel with the old mount. I will relocate a hole and then use probably the same ones that came off. I might use, well, we'll see. I've got four of them from the old one. I'll probably pick the two best and remount them where they need to be. Okay, and there is the transition pan all prepped. Uh, definitely more than 12 holes uh, going from the upper to lower. And here is what I did for the, um, for the part where I had to make the relief cut. Um, I went ahead and cut holes there. So hopefully once I get it in place, 
and move like that, I can weld the plug welds and then weld along that seam. Um, yeah, so it is prepped, ready to go in, and inside, well, let me show you. Okay, here's how things look. I got rust encapsulator um, along the bottom part and weld through primer and the landing spots. Just for funsies, I went and cleaned out and made sure I got rust encapsulator on the bottom of the frame rail. Again, I think the frame rails are galvanized. Um, there was zero signs of corrosion in there uh, and it looked like a galvanized coating, but just for fun, uh, I got in there. Okay, there it is. Um, everything is in place. This actually, uh, with a little bit of manipulation, uh, will clamp down very nicely. Um, super thrilled that this lined up, A, that I was still on the frame rail, even after everything shifted around, and B, that I can uh, actually get this back flat again. Um, things are, are looking great in the back. Um, a little bit of clamping should do it. This isn't held in by anything, just uh, just dropped in place, and everything is looking really good. Uh, I really wish I could keep working on this. I simply ran out of weekend, uh, and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get back to it and make sure everything aligns with the floor itself, and get my measurements all squared away. And really, hopefully, next video we are going to finally weld this back in. I'm so excited. Okay, if you are still with me, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned. Lots more to come.